Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, can we get a few, I'm afraid, traditionally uh, injury latests? How's Zinchenko? Well, he's progressing well. We have another training session tomorrow, and um, I will evaluate whether he's available or not to, um, to play and start the game. And the rest, there is no actual any news. So, Thomas Partey, obviously not yet ready for no. you, hasn't gone to AFCON. Can you just tell me about the, the negotiations involved in that? It was about common sense, obviously. He had a long-term injury. He's been trying to to push his rehab. He really wanted to be with his national team, but obviously he's, he's still far from training with the team and uh, it didn't make a lot of sense to, to be involved. And there's been talk inevitably after you, you lose two games about you being a bit light in defence, pullbacks. The situation with Jurian, how, how does that come into your thinking when you're thinking about you know defenders coming in? Well, unfortunately, that's a... A very long-term injury. Um, he's doing really well, but he's still very far from from being um, fit to train with the team. That's not something that's to compete with the team, so we don't expect him anytime soon. So it's what we have. It's the situation that we have now as well. When Tommy having to um, to leave, and um, we have to cope with that. So a left back coming in in January, even on loan, is something that you're considering or, or not? We are open for the transfer market, um, but again, the emphasis is on, on making the most out of the players that we have, and uh, we will work together with the club to understand whether there is any possibilities and and we have any any good options, and um, and first of all, focus on the players that we have. But it's equally as likely that you'll do no business at all. That's a possibility. <laughs> Can I ask you about the KO? Um, mm -hmm. and a report this week that have been in touch with the PG MOL about some of the tackles and fouls on him. I mean, I, I imagine that the club and the referees are in constant contact about all kinds of issues. Is that just part of that or is it a specific? But that's daily communication or weekly communication that we have about certain topics, but nothing specific about about that one. Is there, is there a trend though for referees to maybe ignore some of the early tackles in a game and is that a, is that a worry? I think the referees know and they know the tactics of the opponent and, and they know that some players are more targeted and as well the way they play, obviously they invite more tackles, but um, I think they are well aware of that. So it's not a specific request no. to the referees no. to go easy or get players to go easy on no. any of them. Are you surprised by the, by the commentary that it's provoked? I think that's been going on for I think two years, no? That uh, obviously we have wingers that they provoke a lot of fouls and, and a lot of attention, and, and that's something normal. Liverpool, in the FA Cup. Yeah. You've won the FA Cup as a as a manager. You have a real feeling for winning it. You want to win it again? A real feeling. It's a great. Uh, it was a, a great experience to win the first title the way we did it, and um, there is a big history between this competition and our club and, um, and we have a, a big opportunity to start again and, um, and make a beautiful journey. We spoke about the potential shortages in, in your squad for various reasons but obviously Mo Salah won't be around for Liverpool because of AFCON. How much of a miss do you think he will be in the FA Cup and, and in the coming? Yeah, both teams we are missing very important players and uh, we knew that we have to adapt to that and, and I still perform and win matches. Can I ask you why I've got you here? A bit off topic, but it's very important. You'll be wearing white at home yeah. on Sunday, part of the No More Red campaign, you know, the anti-knife crime campaign. How important is it to keep keep that campaign at the forefront? I think it's a great initiative from the club. I think giving support and creating um, a safer environment uh, with the power and, and the capacity that we have to to help people to transform certain areas of, of London as well. I think it's a campaign that started three years ago and um, has helped a lot of people already and, and brought a lot of attention. So we can make the streets safer around um, our city, uh, especially with people that we have kids, uh, we will sleep better. Brilliant. Thank you, Mikael. Thank you. Ian. Hi, Mikael. How Hi. are you? Good, thank you. Um, is this the ideal tie for you or is this not the ideal tie for you? A team like Liverpool third round the FA Cup after the two results you've just had? It's the draw, you know, we played two two weeks ago and uh, it was an incredible match and, and I'm sure it will be a really good match again. What I'm trying to get out there is, is it a match whereby 
you'd rather have this level of opposition where your team have to bring their A game, or would you rather have a level of opposition maybe not as high as Liverpool, where they, maybe they wouldn't have needed to, to win it? We don't have a choice. If you ask both teams, probably in the draw, we were expecting something different. But uh, we have this incredible clash uh, in the first round and, um, and we have to go for it. Reflecting back on the defeats to West Ham and Fulham, do you now know what went wrong? Yes, I do, yeah. What went wrong? We weren't at the level, we weren't good enough. I don't think we deserve to lose the match, but we didn't do enough to win it. Are you worried that's going to continue into 2024? Hopefully not, because it was a one-off. I haven't seen the team do what we did in, in certain periods of the matches, so hopefully not. Has it affected confidence and belief in any way? Affects momentum that, uh, that we had uh, till Christmas Day, we are top of the league. Six days later, you are fourth. So you can be very tempted to look at things with a microscope or take the telescope and look a little bit further and have things with a little bit more perspective. And my job big time is to look with a telescope and, and have perspective and, and analyze things in the in the broader way and don't get affected about one performance. Not results, one performance. Looking at the perspective, I mean, you love this competition, everyone loves the FA Cup is special around the world. It's a great competition, as I said before, very attached to the club and and uh, we are the club has won it uh, more time. So, um, yeah, we expect a, a great game and, um, and a good run. One last one from me. Um, you'll have VAR in the game. We saw VAR used uh, to send off Dominic Calvert-Lewin against Palace. Yet there are a lot of games this weekend where there is no VAR. No. Unless the tie is played on a Premier League ground, then there's no VAR. Shouldn't the FA Cup, being the competition it is, have the same rules for everybody. I, you either all have it or none of you have it. Ideally, yes. I would, I would support that idea 100%. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mikel, a lot was made of the Anfield atmosphere before the league game. Um, do you think the Emirates can ever replicate that? It can ever be the same sort of place that can intimidate opponents? It will be our own one, you know, and uh, we are really happy with the atmosphere that we have to, we have created at the Emirates and it's been incredibly supportive. Um, can we tweak it and sometimes make it even more hostile? I think we can, and that's the next step in my opinion. And, um, and we have to be so grateful for what we are achieving and creating in our in our home ground. And um, and I think Sunday is going to be a big one again. How do you take that next step? How do you make it more hostile? I think the team has to give more. I think the team has to transmit that bite, uh, that aggression, and. Uh, and that intimidation and dominance to the opponent. And uh, I think certain games this season and Champions League games are going to create that next step. That's my feeling. You obviously won this trophy in 2020. How important do you think that win was on the journey that you've taken here in the last four years? Yeah, winning always gives you more, more credit. Um, it attaches you emotionally to people because winning at, at the end it creates a, a very special feeling. And those moments are always um, really important when you want to evolve relationship and when you have certain attachment to the team and the players. And, uh, and I think that helps. That win was, was a big deal for you, though, as a manager, obviously your first trophy. Do you, do you think there was a chance that you might have lost your job in the difficult months that followed if you'd not had that trophy to sort of fall back on? Ping, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, we won it for a reason. We decided to win it. We did it against big teams as well. Not only that one after the Community Shield as well. So, um, yeah, we are here for a reason. I only ask because I don't know if you ever reflect on that as being a, a really pivotal moment for you, just as a manager. Well, I think it helps, as I said, but I don't know. After a month gone by, look now. You lose two matches and <laughs> what is happening now? And uh, six days ago, we were top of the league, which means that we're the best team, more consistent team in the league, in the Premier League. Um, yeah put things in perspective. Thank you. Simon? Mikel, you're supposed to have this mid-season break after Sunday's game. Yeah. If you had a replay, um, you won't have that break. Just sort of how difficult is that for planning? How frustrating is it? Something the calendar needs to be looked at because it wouldn't really feel like a break if you suddenly have to play in the middle of yeah, that break will be minimal and, and we have planned with both the scenarios obviously because it's a possibility always in football and, um, and yeah, we want to win the game, we will try to win the game um, but that has to be considered because it's, it's there. A, a replays in the FA Cup, the sort of third, fourth round, something that needs to be looked at next season, particularly when you've got expanded Champions League games, is it something that might have to come out of the calendar? 
I think so, but um, we will see what happens with because with the new format of Champions League as well, there will be going to be more games, so I don't know where we're going to fit them. I just asked you as well about um, the goalkeeper, obviously in the Carabao Cup, he played Aaron for the game. Is he going to play on Sunday? We will see on Sunday. I cannot give you the lineup right now. And lastly, on, on party, are we, for him, talking about there's still weeks to go or months to go in terms of comeback? What Hopefully it's weeks. Um, when he's going to determine and how many weeks he would... A little bit depends on on how the the next step uh, training with the team um, will take him, but uh, he's progressing well. Thank you, Kaya. Hi. Um, another one of your injured players, Fabio Vieira. Just want to ask how he's getting on in terms of his recovery. He's, been out for he's doing well again, but again, it was a surgery that required um, two different things to get um, to get resolved, and um, the first signs are good. Uh, obviously, it's uh, still. A bit far from from what we want him, but um, but he needs to keep working, and hopefully in the next few weeks we can have him. And him being out might open up another chance for some other midfielders like Emil Smith Rowe. Mm. Um, in the summer there were some links to him leaving, particularly in that last week of the window. I just wondered how close was that? Was that ever a thing? Did you ever have a conversation with him saying that he needs to stay? It was never part of our plans, no. And going forward. I know you've wanted to give him more minutes this season. Unfortunately, injuries have got in the way, and just as you were starting to build up, he got that injury before. Um, if he comes to you towards the end of the season and, and his minutes haven't necessarily changed and he says, I need to leave for the good of my career to go and get minutes elsewhere, will you accept that or will you just say to him, look, Arsenal's the best place for you to continue your development, I want you here? Now, this is a two-way um, conversation all the time with players and, and I love listening to understand how they're feeling and what is the best things or, or what they want to go because you really have to be aligned with them and, and how they're feeling and they have to feel important. Obviously, there is still the biggest part of the season uh, to play now and, uh, and we have to be patient and he will have his chances. And if a player more generally comes to you and says, I want to leave to get more minutes, are you ever going to stand in their way or will you happily just say, if you don't want to be here, then that's fine. Well, it depends on the situation in the squad. You know, I want to help. We want to help uh, the players to fulfill um, their feelings, but as well, they need to understand and they they are in a team, in a squad that has been assembled and uh, and planned with them in the squad. And uh, you don't always get what you want, you know, because maybe they wanted something different six months ago. Uh, that it was a new contract or it was uh, another individual uh, target that they had. So it doesn't always go your way. Great. And final live section, James. Hi, Miguel. Hi. One of the subjects that you've spoken about in recent weeks <clears throat> has been execution in the final third. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered, as a coach, when it comes to the final pass or the finish, the shot, is that a specific area where you feel like you have less control as a coach and there's more responsibility with the individual, with the player? Well, I think overall, it's the execution is in in every part of the of the field. But when it comes to those spaces, the timing and and the definition of an action uh, becomes trickier to coach and certainly to replicate an action in the game. That's probably the hardest thing to replicate in in football. Uh, the timing, the behavior of the opponent, the distance between the ball and the feet of the opponent, the exact location of that shot, the position of the keeper, um, the game state. So it's 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 very tricky, but uh, it's something that we have to improve recently, especially in in the way that we have transformed those chances into goals. And do you try to emulate that in in, in training then that kind of specific? Yeah, matter? for sure. Yeah, we have to. It's our job, and 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 the things that put them in the in the most concrete and and reliable scenarios, I think, is going to help the players to do it better. And, and in terms of that finishing, you know. With the guys like Saka, Martinelli, Martin Odegaard, maybe they're not finishing at the level they were previously, maybe last season. Do you think that's just a question of over time it will come back, it fluctuates naturally? Is it confidence? What do you put it down to? Well, I think what they did last year is exceptional, you know, and to maintain that, those numbers, we knew that it was going to be extremely difficult because it was a one off, a no one off for us, one off in the league. Uh, so we know that we need other resources and other kind of goals to maintain the levels out uh, that we want.